Untamed TV fans. Hi, it's your host Craig Bielik here today with my new friend. Um, just met her just a couple of days ago. Chelsea yes. Snaringer. Snaringer. Okay, yes. I knew I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> That's okay. And she is with the Bear Happens River Health the Department, which is awesome and great to have her here today. And uh, this is one of the funnest parts of the job is I meet new friends every single day. But you're not here today to talk about being my friend. No. You're here today no. to talk about prescription drug, drug. Overdose, overdose prevention. prevention yes prescription yes. drug overdose pre prevention mm -hmm. okay so you, you and I have been chatting but tell the folks at home what exactly that is so what that is is um, we do kind of multiple things to kind of combat this prescription drug problem that we're all facing um, we do um, uh, patient education so when they go into their doctor talking to their doctor about the dangers of opioids mm -hmm. which is a which is a medication that is prescribed generally to treat pain so we do a lot of awareness to help patients kind of take responsibility for their own for their own health and um, we also want to decrease the demand of, of opioids um, so we do that with by um, having prescriber trainings and having them kind of uptake the new CDC guidelines for prescribing for prescribing opioids, excuse me. And then also um, another part of that is naloxone, which is a uh, opioid antagonist. So what it does is it reverses, it can reverse an overdose. Okay, I'm glad you said that because antagonist sounded a little strange. It <laughs> sounded sound like this is a superhero movie. Well, or it kind of is. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> I also am happy that you said uh, at the beginning of what, of what you were saying it, that everyone is dealing with because the fact yeah. is everyone right now is dealing it uh, with it. Yeah. Uh, talk about the rise of uh, mm -hmm. prescription drug overdose I mean recently and um, yeah so actually just recently Utah is actually seventh in the nation for over um, non-fatal and fatal overdose deaths and so and that's compared to back east so as far as Utah goes we're pretty far up there and we actually moved farther down the line from other states we were fourth now we're seventh but that's just because everybody else is getting worse but as far as our health district which is um, Rich County, Cache County, and Box Elder County. We are ranked sixth in the state for overdose deaths. Um, that is like really sad. It is really that sad. That is really sad. I would rather that we were like 50th. I know, you know like, or not on the list. Or not on the list. <laughs> well, we got to be somewhere on the well, list. Well, that's true. We're going to have to end up point. somewhere in there. That's incredible. And, mm -hmm. and up in the Box Elder area, is it any better or worse than other areas in the state? Oh, actually. Um, Brigham City in particular is our area of concern. I, I don't know specifics, but I can give you a per 100,000 rate. Right. So the state average is 22.6 per 100,000 overdose mm -hmm. deaths, and Brigham City has a 30.26 rate per so hundred thousand. So higher than the whole overall state higher average. Higher than the whole overall state. So Brigham City is our area of concern as far as my program goes right. at the health department. Right. For preventing this. So you know what, describe if you can to me uh, how does a person know when they've crossed the line <laughs> of, you know, using an opioid for pain and getting into a situation where they are addicted and possibly at risk of, of harming themselves? Well, that is a very um, loaded question, kind of, because <laughs> it's very different for other people, for, for everybody. You know, right. everybody's metabolism metabolism is different everybody reacts to drugs differently like some people you talk to them opioids are like the worst thing ever they make them feel like crap they hate right, them right. and others you say I took one pill one time and I knew that I was gonna have a problem so it's very like it's it's scary because it's a risk that we all have um, as far as pain management goes but as far as you know kind of I guess when you hit that line of like maybe I have a problem one thing is I do know um, if you find yourself wanting to take more than is prescribed, so if you're, um, per, say, to take two every four hours and you find yourself wanting to take three or four every four hours or more less off, right, more right. often okay. or something like that, that could be a, a telltale sign That's of, an a, indicator of, a, then. of a problem. Right. And, you know, I kind of sit on the one side. I have, I've only taken them one time in my life. I had a surgery on my nose. Mm -hmm. I know you guys are out there like going, what, that's fixed? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I didn't, I didn't do anything cosmetic to it. I had the, you know, the deviated septum uh -huh. thing. And, and um, I remember taking one and thinking, 
yeah, uh, I really like this. And the next thing that went off in my head was an alarm that said, you Be stick careful. to that prescription. Mm -hmm. And so I stuck to that thing religiously. You know, yeah. th there was a taper off thing and I, I was tapering off down to the down to the minute. Good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. On that. So you think you have a problem and maybe you do have a problem. How can Bear River help Health Department help with that? Yeah, so we actually have a substance abuse division. So we are the um, substance abuse, what's it called? The local substance abuse authority okay. is what the health department is. And um, if you feel like you have a problem, we have support for families. We have support for individuals. You can come into the health department and you can do what we call an episode of service. If you just feel like oh my gosh, maybe I need to talk to somebody about this. Right. You can go into the health department. One of our counselors can get you in as soon as possible that day is what we really shoot for. You can sit in, you can talk to him, you can talk to him about maybe you do have a problem, maybe you don't. Here are some tips for you, some things that we can help you with, and that is free of charge. Okay. So that's something. So you can get a free assessment and, yeah. and get kind of an opinion Yeah. if maybe exactly. they have a, a problem opinion. and then yeah. sort of steered to the right direction to, uh -huh. to get some help. Yeah, and then they can enroll them in treatment if they feel like it's a it's a big enough problem, that's something that they want to do. So, uh, Chelsea, how long have you worked for the health department? I have worked for the health department almost two years. Really? Yes. So you've seen this problem grow during that two years, or did it start out that way? Um, it started out that way. I really kind of was given this program, and I honestly have learned so much as to how big of a problem it actually is in the two years that I've been at the health department. Right. So. I guess I could say I'm maybe a lot like a lot of people and they don't know very much about it, but the more you learn, the greater risk you realize that everybody is really at. Right. Well, suppose you're out there and you're watching and you're an employer or something like that and you're thinking, I need some material. I, I want to do to make sure that my people uh, understand that this is a problem mm -hmm. and that there are resources. Can they come in the health department Absolutely. and get some free stuff? Absolutely. And um, we've done a lot of work recently with a lot of the health clinics within our, our health district, getting them materials to be able to give to their patients and work sites or any, really any company or any anybody really can come and get any kind of resources that they, they feel would be beneficial to them or to their employees or anybody in their family. We are so open to any of that at the health department and we, right. we want to help everybody and anybody. Right, and I know the way I've met you is I work with Brigham City Community Hospital, yes. and you, you guys are getting information out to the hospitals mm -hmm. and trying to work with them to make sure that our patients are educated yes. and that they know of your resources too. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's yeah. a really good thing to do. Well, okay, you. so let's get down to the nitty gritty. Okay. Uh, how can people find out more? What's your website? brhd.org. Okay. And what hours are you guys open? We are open Monday through Thursday from 8 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night. And then we are open on Fridays from 8 in the morning till 1 p.m. Okay. And phone number? Can you remember that? 435-752-6500. Um, She's good. She didn't know I was going to ask that question. No, you I didn't. You can tell that. It's 792. I think it's 792. Right. 792-6500. Right. So if you're watching out there and you think you have a problem or you think you might know someone mm -hmm. who has a problem and you don't have to live in Bear River or Box Elder County, these guys are available for everyone. Yes. Uh, steer yourself their way and get some information and get some help. I've got Chelsea right here, my new friend. Yes. This is just awesome. Thanks for watching Untamed TV with Mr. Craig Bielik. Call me that from now on. <laughs> and Mrs. Chelsea Schneringer. Schneringer. Yes. Okay. Hey, golly, I, I thought my last name was hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's what she came on TV today, folks, was to be abused. That's what well, she did that for. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for trying to help us with this big problem yeah. in our community. Thank you. Yeah. See you next time.